One thing I'm seeing being used increasingly in websites are individual text fields for individual characters, say for a code validation. Today we're going to have a look at building one of those. Hey everyone, my name is Andy and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how you can create an individual text box for individual characters. So for example, if you sign up to a website and it wants to validate your email address, it will send you a code and as you type in that code, each text box fills in one by one. I've always thought that was quite cool and I'm seeing it being used more and more. So we're going to have a look at building one of those today in CodePen. So we're here in CodePen and I'm going to start off by making just a basic form with four input fields and one button. So I'll just go ahead and make those. So that's our basic form. I'm just going to go ahead and style this quickly just so we can make it look a bit nicer. Okay, so that's our basic form set up. It looks good. So we're going to go ahead and actually make this magic work. I'm just going to go ahead and minimize these views because we don't really need those. I'm just going to bring this out a little bit here. Awesome. So this is going to be a two stage process. The first one is when we put a key down and the next one is when we release the key. And the reason for this is when we use the backspace key, we need to work on that as soon as you press the button down. Whereas if you type in an actual character, we need to work on that when you pull the character up. And that will make sense as we go along with this. So this has now grabbed our input characters. And I'm just going to add a couple of constants here just to make things easier so we're not using any magic numbers. So we got so because we only have four indexes, we don't want to go beyond that with our code. And the backspace key, the code for that in JavaScript is eight on the key code, which you'll see momentarily. So first off, we're going to go through all of our input characters and add an event handler for button down and button up. So at the moment, nothing happens. Once you've input a character, that's it. You don't have to manually click on the next one and the next one. And that's not what we're going for here. So we're going to work on adding a new value. So we're going to get the index of the current input character and we're going to get the value of the current input character. So const index equals d. Makes sense. So the next thing we'll do is we'll increment our next index, and if it's more than our max index, then we'll just drop out. So So the reason why I pass int our index is because JavaScript is amazing in that 
the index is currently a string. So index plus one, if we're on index one, for example, that plus one will be index 11. Index two plus one will be index 21. So by passing it as an int, our index then becomes the number one, and then plus one becomes the number two. So now what we're going to do is we are going to move to the next index. So next we're going to make sure that we've input a value into our on key up. So if the, if the value is empty, then we'll just drop out of this function. And the reason for that is because on the on key down, if we press backspace, then our value will be empty when we lift our finger off the button. And that will then trigger this event and cause all sorts of chaos. So if value is null, then return. Simple as that. So the next thing we're going to do is check to see if our next index is the same as our max index or more than our max index. And if it is, we're going to handle that or focus our button. So if next index is greater than max index, then we want Simple. So now nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, but our button should be focused. Why is it not? Oh, because our document by if, not by ID. Yeah, that will do it. So as you can see, there's now that black outline around our go. So now we're going to increment our value onto the next one. And that should be that. If I then input a value here, we're now moving on to our next one and then our go is ready. That's quite cool. I like that. So that handles the on key up. Now we need to handle our on key down. So we're going to copy this because we still need this. So the next thing we're going to do is work on our backspace key, but only if the text field is empty, because if it's empty, we want to move to the previous one. So if e dot key code equals backspace key. So we're going to copy this bit here. But we're going to minus it first. And then we'll copy this one. So in theory, I can go to this. So actually, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. However, we do need to make sure that we don't go too far. Because if you can see here, we've got some errors showing up. So what we're going to do Provided it's more than our minimum index of one, this will work. Or well, we need to make that greater or equal to. Why is that happening? Oh, that would be because I haven't declared that yet. I do know what I'm doing, honestly. <laughs> so, go back space. And as you can see, we're not getting any errors, so that's wonderful. 
and that pretty much sums it up but there's more we can do so if i've realized i've entered in the wrong code and i want to overwrite it i'm now going to press the button five nothing happens So in theory, this should now empty. Yeah, there we go. So you can overwrite a value or you can just backspace it all together. That is incredibly simple. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. I love hearing from you guys. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. It will only encourage me to make more videos like this more often. Check out my website, andymill.io, and I'll see you next time.